Hi, Professor Brennan. I'm back. We're going to talk about uh, deception, how to detect deception. This is for my interpersonal communication class. This is Dark Side of Relationships, Part 1, and we are in Video C. Here we go. All right, here we are. Da -dun -da -dun. Let's get to that playground photo slide. So, detecting deception. Do you remember when we talked about this before in another uh, lecture? I think it was in nonverbal communication that we talked about the research had said, it stated that people think they're really good at detecting deception when actually in most cases they're not, that that's kind of the paradox of that. So whenever I think about this, when I'm, as we're going to talk about this, keep that in mind that oftentimes we think something is not the truth when, when, or we're really good at figuring things out when we're not. Like we have a false belief or kind of a delusion about ourselves. And there's a particular concept related to that. And off the top of my head, I don't remember what that's called, but I think it's about self-appraisal actually, our appraisal of ourselves. So keep that in mind as we talk about that. Here we go. Okay, so how we attempt to detect if someone is lying, how do we do that? Well, one way we do that is when people confess something, right? And he, oftentimes either they're, we've asked them to confess something or perhaps they've, they've confessed it's unsolicited, meaning we didn't ask for that confession of what they did or did not do. And it makes us go, hmm. If they're confessing something that we didn't know about, then is there something more that they should be telling us? Because confessing means they withheld it and now they're copying to it. Do you see what happens? This has happened to me in my relationship. So when my partner says it's usually in conflict too, and, it, and we'll be arguing about something and she'll bring up something from the past that I've done, or she'll bring up something that she's never brought up before. And Im I immediately think, so has she been mad about this the whole time and she hasn't said anything or she just remembered it right now, but everything gets called into question. Okay. So this is the way we think we, we attempt to detect if someone's deceiving us. Okay. That's just an example. Uh, Third party information. So when a third party, like a friend outside of that, whatever that relationship is where the deception, where you think the deception is happening, when a third party gives us information, like you think that your uh, boyfriend has gone to a party, he says he's going to this party and uh, your best friend is out on the town and she sees him with his friends at a bar. Obviously he didn't go to the party. Third party information is like how we attempt to see if someone is deceiving us, right? It makes us call into question like, Hmm, what does that mean? Or we will ask someone could be, we asked him, did you see so-and-so was he at the party? Right? Okay. Physical evidence. That's the easiest one. That's why I didn't go there first, right? Physical evidence. You read your, uh, girlfriend's journal. Right? You read the girlfriend's journal when you know you shouldn't be doing that, but there's physical evidence where she's talking about some relationship she's having with another guy or another girl. Okay. Um, physical evidence of you find something, right? We see this in the movies all the time. You find, uh, there's lipstick on his collar or on her collar, or, uh, there's, um, they, their, their clothing smells like a cologne or perfume that, isn't yours, right? That's physical evidence, how we attempt to detect um, if someone's deceiving us. So who do we do that? Like how, when we are evaluating those messages, you want to ask yourself, right? There's a lot of energy that's put in trying to, to be a little detective when you're trying to think of someone's not being honest with you. So you have to ask yourself, how important is this relationship? 
right? You need to define that for yourself. Are you going to put that energy into that? Um, how important is this information to you? Here's the thing. I mean, let's go back to that idea of that, that journal thing. So when I was uh, in high school, I had a best friend. Her name was uh, Angela. And she, and she knows about this and people that know me and Angela probably don't know. So if they watch this, they're going to know, but it doesn't matter to me. Anyway, uh, we used to go to, my parents had a place in a beach house in Baja, California, in Mexico. And we would go there once a month, once every couple of months as kids. And when we were old enough, we could drive there. We had to drive there and, and do all that. And one time we were down there and Angela left, we were journal writers, left her journal there. So the next time I was down there, I had to get her, bring her journal home. And I read her journal. I opened up to the part where she wrote about me. Of course, because I swear to God, that was my little karma. But I bring this up and I didn't like what she wrote about me, by the way. It hurt my feelings. But at the same time, you know what? I deserve that because it was none of my dang business. It was none of my business of, of her, uh, of what she had written about me. So um, you have to ask yourself, how important is this information to you? Do you really want to know this as your plain detective? Are you really wanting to know uh, what that person thinks about you or any of that? Ask yourself because there are costs and rewards associated with a lie. You might be rewarded with knowing the truth but there's also cost to it as well. Okay. Also, um, rules. Rules that you have in the relationship. Things you've established. Determine how you should respond or how you are expected to respond to that. Right? There was an explicit rule. We never said, don't read our journals. We just know that's private information. You're not supposed to do that. And I went against that rule in the friendship. Did it end the friendship? No, because she really wasn't that kind of person to be that upset about it. But I deserved what I got, right? And then you have to decide, is this what happened, this deception that happened in your relationship? Is it a deal breaker, right? Is this the thing that's going to end your friendship or end your relationship? You have to really think about this because deception can be a normal part of any relationship to some degree. That's what we're talking about. The dark side, we're trying to shine the light on this. You have to think this through and I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. This is all personal. It's a personal choice. All these things are personal choices. And the greater of importance, the deception, you attach to the deception. So the more energy you put on what you think this deception is or this deception that did happen, the more likely you are to end the relationship. So you have to decide what's important. Had this person done something that's totally unforgiving to you or is it something that you can look past and you're the, having that person in your life is more important than not having them in your life. That's something you have to decide for yourself. No amount of interpersonal communication or anything can decide that for you. So as I some final thoughts about, uh, as we finish up with deception. So as I said, there is no right answer, right? Each relationship is unique. It's unique to you. Um, each of you determine what is right for you as a couple or a friendship or individually. You have to decide as a couple. Everyone's unique and the rules between you and that other person are unique. It's really between you and that person. No one should be telling you what you should or should not do because it's your life. And finally, um, healthy relationships encourage and support communication about what you need and want in the relationship. Okay. And what you can expect all healthy relationships, any relationship that has any 
as healthiness, not just about boundaries, but has the ability to talk about what's going on. That's healthy. To deny it or not talk about it is not healthy because it leads to having a relationship in your head rather than between that other person. And the last thought is uh, never accept harm. Never accept emotional, mental, physical harm from anyone ever. Okay. That's not acceptable. And as we talk about dark side, like I said, stuff is going to come up. If it comes up for you, I want you to contact me directly and tell me what's up so we can move forward and get you whatever you need. But never accept any kind of emotional, mental, or physical harm. You matter. You don't deserve that treatment ever. It doesn't matter what you've done. Even if you deceived another person, okay, you don't deserve to be harmed. You don't. You will make mistakes. That's part of life. How you handle those mistakes is up to you, but it doesn't mean you deserve to be harmed um, in revenge for those things. That's it for me. I wish you a beautiful day and we'll see you next time.